Well, I guess that's legal. Gotta use that opportunity, man. I have a SummerSlam contract. Here you go. See you at SummerSlam, Naya. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Greatness of Smackdown. How are my forehead maniacs doing today? Blessing you today with that plasma forehead. And as you guys know, you click that like button, your Coco Jumbo grows to the moon. So, this is a contract. This is a SummerSlam. Official SummerSlam contract. Uh, WWE gave it to me. I have the scoop. I have the contacts. So, basically, SummerSlam just got a lot better. The great one, Nia Jax, Divas Championship, loser leaves. The match is gonna be a little tough for me because I took a little break from YouTube, I gained weight, I basically relaxed for the first time in a very long time, but I don't think anyone can get up from that forehead smash, so... I have a big chance of winning. I know many of you want me to talk about Bray Wyatt, I have seen the news. Bray Wyatt got released by the WWE. Now, the thing is... I'm not gonna talk about it in this video, I'll leave it for tomorrow on uh, Greatness of Wrestling. But yeah, this is so weird, I thought it's fake. So yeah, people, we got another Friday, another great episode of Friday Night Smackdown. Now, I did find all of this entertaining, the contract signing was entertaining as hell. The only question I have, was it on purpose or did WWE really thought this is the only way to build John Cena versus Roman Reigns because I think a baby could book this match. My nine-month baby could turn this into a great storyline. I mean, I can't really complain, I still found it very, very entertaining. I'm just saying, why did WWE choose this bizarre path? The biggest problem I have with this is Finn Balor. I wouldn't say it makes him look weak, but it really devalued his whole return. Knowing WWE, Finn Balor will blame Baron Corbin and totally forget about the fact that he was about to main event SummerSlam. That's not how it should work. Finn Balor should have a huge problem with that. I don't care how much of a babyface you are, you just got robbed. John Cena took your contract. You should be just a little bit angry about that. Change the contract or I'll stuck a demon up your ass. That should be the attitude right here. I mean, let's just be honest. With that being said though, I mean, it still was great television, the crowd popped. By the way, big shout out to the crowd, this has to be the best crowd we had since, you know, the audience's return to the WWE. This was a great crowd. I really like the energy. By the way, Sasha Banks is back and somewhere Mark is very excited. Sasha! Yeah, Sasha I can hear Sasha! him. He's very happy about that. So let's talk about SmackDown. The show kicked off with John Cena. I mean, I do appreciate John Cena's energy, but this was a very weird promo. But I do love how they still mention missionary. Keep a person in your life who they can make missionary position interesting for two decades. This seemed a little childish to me, you know, he said Roman Reigns didn't reject me because of my music and my look, the fact that I didn't change. It's like if the Stone Cold Steve Austin returned with a different gimmick or The Rock. A bunch of cheesy jokes that I don't think most of them actually landed. He also said Reigns has to change every two years because fans stop caring about him. They don't believe in him and Reigns doesn't believe in himself. Cena says Reigns did not reject him because of how he looks but because of how he would have made Reigns look. Baron Corbin interrupts, and you get the point. They were never close, but Baron Corbin knows how successful John Cena is. Asks for money. John Cena gave him some cash, but it wasn't enough. Come on, man. You're successful. Things got heated. Baron Corbin accuses John Cena of being a Hollywood sellout, of being cheap. Cena says, you know what? You need a little attitude adjustment and that's exactly what we got so you know at the end of the day as cheesy as it was it was still very entertaining i'm just saying there's so much more stuff you could do with roman reigns and john cena maybe that's just beginning obviously all we need is these two guys in the ring and just a little bit of freedom when it comes to their promos 
That's it. And I'm, I, I'm sure we're gonna get some crazy moments. I just don't understand why did Finn Balor have to third wheel this rivalry. I honestly believe my suggestion was a lot better. Adam Pearce saying, okay, Cena wants a match, Balor wants a match. Number one contenders match, main event of SmackDown, long match, Cena wins, and we get the match. This kinda made Balor look like an idiot. Then we saw the SmackDown Tag Team Champion Jimmy Uso vs Rey Mysterio in a very entertaining match. I think Edge said it, people still don't appreciate Rey Mysterio enough. I kinda agree with that. People take Rey Mysterio for granted. This guy is still doing all the crazy flips at that age. And, you know, I keep saying that, but Rey Mysterio is so legendary, such a legendary wrestler that every time someone sees a wrestler with a mask, they think about Rey Mysterio. And like I've said, if you're not a wrestling fan, you think that's Rey Mysterio. So last week, Dominic Mysterio lost the match, but this week, Rey Mysterio won the match with the same tactic that the Usos used last week. I know we always complain about the tag team division, but... I mean, you gotta appreciate this. Mysterios versus Usos, and their matches are absolutely unbelievable. That kickoff match at Money in the Bank was just something, and hopefully we're gonna see a rematch at SummerSlam, and I honestly wouldn't mind seeing uh, a ladder match or something. We see Bianca Belair in the ring, and Kayla congratulates her on hitting 110 days in her title reign. She got interrupted by Carmella. She mocks Bianca and says that if you really wanna prove how great of a champion you are, you should give me another champion opportunity. Uh, they got interrupted by Zelina Vega. She says the WWE Universe wants to see Belair challenge a rising star like Vega. They double teamed on Bianca Belair and we saw the return of Sasha Banks and the pop was unbelievable. The fans acted as if Stone Cold Steve Austin just came back and decided to wrestle again. So of course we saw some teamwork and Adam Pearce announced that in the main event we are going to see Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks versus Carmella and Zelina Vega. You probably noticed how bizarre this friendship is, like it's way over the top. And this basically gave away the fact that Sasha Banks is probably turning heel. And if she's not turning heel at least she's going to continue the rivalry but... We're, we're gonna, but we're gonna talk about that just a little bit later. We saw the WWE 24-7 Championship title match. Reggie versus a mystery opponent who turned out to be Chad Gable, who was with Otis before the match. Otis attacked Reginald, but Reginald is still doing all the flippy stuff, all these acrobatics, and he managed to overcome the odds. He didn't win the match, but we got a disqualification. And of course, the guy has these Dragon Ball Z superpowers, so he managed to avoid the beating. Reggie is great, man. I love Reggie. I don't know your opinion about the guy. I know some people will say it's silly, it's stupid, but the 24 7 championship is entertaining again. And I I think that's really hard to achieve because we pretty much seen everything with the title. So we saw the WWE Universal Championship contract signing. Reigns says he doesn't want to face Cena because he's old news and Finn Balor is hungry and he deserves that championship opportunity, which did not sound sincere. It did sound like he just thinks Finn Balor is an easy target. He also said he can't wait to beat Balor. Of course, the highlight was Roman Reigns calling John Cena Mr. Missionary. Reigns says he's gonna smash Finn Balor and send him right back to NXT. Finn Balor responds by saying, I'm gonna return to NXT as the Universal Champion. I mean, where did that come from? He really wants to win the championship and go back to NXT? Isn't he like on SmackDown right now, officially? Finn Balor was about to sign the contract, Baron Corbin attacks him from behind, he was about to sign the contract, but John Cena attacks Baron Corbin and signs the contract, and that that's that looks very official, I gotta say. Not a lawyer, I think that's as legit as you can get. Paul Heyman obviously has a problem with that, but Adam Pearce says, yeah, it's good enough for me. I mean, to be fair, that's how WWE been running their business for a long time now good enough. But as bizarre as this was, it was really entertaining and especially to people, uh, you know, in the live audience. A lot of surprises, twists and turns. It's just kind of odd that they decided to put Finn Balor in that situation because, you know, normally you would put someone like Baron Corbin in the first place. People don't want to see that match, they want Cena. 
and now they're giving you something that's already good, Roman Reigns and Finn Balor, but they're almost treating it like this match would be an afterthought, like it would suck. So we got John Cena for the save, at least it's different. We saw a six-man tag team match, Cesaro, Biggie, and Nakamura versus Rude, Ziggler, and Apollo Crews. One thing you probably noticed as well, like I've said, they're trying twice as hard. At the end of the match we saw a lot of crazy sequences so it was entertaining, I can't really complain. And the babyface team won when we got a Kinshasa to Apollo Crews. I believe these six competitors should have like a big intercontinental championship match at SummerSlam. I would say a ladder match but we just saw money in the bank so I don't think WWE would do that but something along those lines would definitely work. We saw the WWE Hall of Famer Edge but after the commercial we saw Seth Rollins and I was a bit confused. There's, there's something I need to change in my life. I don't think this works anymore. Turns out during the commercial, Seth Rollins attacked Edge from behind, which seemed like good television, so I'm not sure why it happened during a commercial break. Seth Rollins says it's a revolution and he's revolutionary. And you know, we got the same thing. Seth Rollins says he should be the champion right now and if he can't be the champion, neither can Edge. We also heard Becky Lane chants, which Seth Rollins totally ignored, which is a shame, you know, I, I want people to respond to the chants. I think Charlotte Flair is doing a great job with that and Seth Rollins had a perfect opportunity to rose the WWE audience, but he completely ignored it. We heard We Want Becky chants and he could have responded with some something random like, uh, yeah, I did too, but unlike you, I actually achieved something. So I don't know, something like that. But this match is gonna be good, man. Edge's storytelling in the ring and Seth Rollins' athleticism, this is gonna be something special. Uh, you know, especially considering the fact that Edge didn't really wrestle many different opponents yet. And in the main event, we saw Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair versus Carmella and Zelina Vega. So of course, this was a fun little match and obviously, since it's in the main event, we expected something huge. Obviously, the babyface team took the W, all seems good. Peace, love, hugs and kisses. Until we saw the backstabber and Sasha Banks completely destroyed Bianca Belair with no remorse. She posed with the championship and got back to work. And that's how SmackDown actually ended with Sasha Banks acting crazy with the worst fake laugh in history. SummerSlam is all about big matches, it's basically bigger than WrestleMania this year and it basically tells you a couple of things. First of all, yes, this is gonna be a great match and I'm sure this is the biggest possible SmackDown women's match that we could have. So that's great, we're gonna have a great match, I'm sure it's gonna deliver and you know, we're interested. Uh, another thing is, it basically also tells you that there's no one else, you can't really have anything entertaining at this point. That's literally the only big rivalry left for Bianca Belair until Becky Lynch possibly returns. So Sasha Banks is a heel, which is something that should have happened a long time ago, at WrestleMania perhaps. The biggest problem with the storyline is that it never really felt that personal, it finally does. And you know, at the end of the day, SummerSlam is this year's WrestleMania, so I can't complain. Oh, and the contract actually says I main eventing SummerSlam uh, versus Nia Jax, um, MMA rules. So this is something to look forward to. So that was your SmackDown, and as bizarre as it gets sometimes, at the end of the day, it was entertaining, and that's all I want. Thank you for watching the video, don't forget to tune in tomorrow, I'll actually talk about Bray Wyatt and a lot more WWE news. The great one, peace, love and hugs, it's been a pleasure.